I am your host, Portia Monique, and we have two very special guests today. Of course, we have, everyone knows her as Spinderella, Deidre Roper, Spinderella, one third of the iconic hip hop, hip hop group, um, Salt and Pepper. And then we also have Dr. Olapade. Did I pronounce that correctly, doctor? You did, you did. Okay, wonderful. So welcome, ladies. Uh, we have a wonderful evening in store for everyone. I, I do want to give both of you an opportunity to introduce yourselves, tell us about who you are, and tell us why breast cancer is so important to you. And we will start off with you, Spinderella. Well, should I call you Spinderella or can I call you Yes. Spinderella? Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll but if you want to shorten it, you could call me Spin. Most people just call me Spin. Okay. Hi, everyone. Yes, I am Spinderella from uh, formerly of Salt and Pepper. I've been um, impacted uh, with breast cancer due to the fact that my sister, I was a caregiver for my sister. And my sister was, my little sister was diagnosed in 2012. So I was her caregiver and, she, you know, unfortunately she passed. So I am very well aware of the trials that come with um, such a horrible uh, disease. And I, I, I'm completely glad to say that, you know, um, I'm a part of this organization that is putting on an affair this Saturday, this their 10th annual uh, pink tie affair. I'm going to be virtually DJing the after party for it. Yes. So I'm excited about that. And I just love what they do. Um, um, everything from research to offering resources and education. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. And I'm just glad to be a part of that. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank we you. also have Dr. Olapade. Uh, she's a hematology oncologist and founder of the Clinical Cancer Genetics Program at the University of Chicago Medicine. So Dr. Olapade, please give yourself an introduction and introduce yourself to our family. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, participate in this. I. I'm a breast cancer expert. I treat patients with breast cancer and I do research in breast cancer. And because I practice on the South side of Chicago, I see a lot of black women, black and brown women, women of all races who come in after a diagnosis of breast cancer. And so I really uh, developed expertise uh, in taking care of young women with breast cancer. And what really makes it important for us to share this moment together is because there's not the same awareness of breast cancer in black communities that I see in other communities, especially uh, the, what I will call the super um, vigilant white women who come, doesn't matter where they live, they want the best and so they come down to the University of Chicago wanting to get more information. Mm -hmm. So that's why I try my best to go to everywhere and to be able to tell people about what I know about breast cancer because breast cancer is actually curable. It is treatable. And because of research, lots of women now are surviving breast cancer. So I'm here today to share what I know and to be able to really motivate all of us because the most important risk factor for breast cancer is that you're a woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as we celebrate October, as we think about all those pinks out there, uh, my patients tell me we need to think beyond pink and really begin to think about what we can do to know our risk for breast cancer. That's mm -hmm. why I love your health I IQ uh, 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 program because yes. you need to know what is your IQ about breast cancer? Absolutely. Right? And what are you going to do about it? Right. So I want to jump into, um, thank you so much for being here, both of you ladies. It's definitely a pleasure to have you both speak to our audience about the importance of breast cancer awareness, how it affects our community and what we can do about it. But Spin, as you said, I can affectionately call you. Spin, <laughs> let's get into your sister's story. Um, breast cancer is personal for you. Like you said, you were her caretaker. Her name was Andrea. You were yeah. her caretaker. And tell 
us about some of the trials and tribulations that went on with you and your caretaking, but also how she found out that she had it. Um, is it in your family? All of that type of stuff. Well, um, my sister, we found out together. She noticed that she had a lump on her breast. Um, she immediately went to the doctor and of course they, you know, she was diagnosed with it. And just from the beginning, the confusion of really just not knowing where to go and like who, who's a great resource, you know, you hear about it, but when that diagnosis comes, it's, it hits you like a ton of bricks. So I was literally by her side the whole time. And it was very trying because mm -hmm. as a caretaker, you know, shout out to all those out there that are um, right in the front row of someone dealing with that as well. Um, it, it, it takes a lot of you to um, encourage mm -hmm. and to help with resources because, you know, assuming that, you know, the person that is dealing with breast cancer themselves, it mentally um, affects them as well as physically. Yeah. So I just, I went into first gear and made sure that I captured resources, got information, spoke to other women that were dealing with it. And fortunately, you know, here in Dallas, we have um, some great organizations that was very helpful um, to my sister, but you know, she she wind up passing a couple of years after that. It was it was an it was an insane ride, mm -hmm. um, and I'm still very affected by it. But um, that's why I, I dedicate myself to making sure you know um, that not only do I do my own screening, but you know partake in, in organizations that are helping to do research and help helping with resources for those that are first finding out or just need that info. You know. Yes. Yes. Uh, so sorry to hear that happened to your sister. Um, and, you know, we, you said it was a couple of years ago. So hopefully, you know, we're praying for your strength and all of that. And um, happy that you are out here being a resource for other women to yep. gather this information and get information. So thank you for talking to us about that. <laughs> but Dr. Olapade, um, Spence said that her sister and her, they found out together. I believe she did a self-examination. Is that correct? Yes. So Dr. Olapati, can you talk to the importance of self breast examinations? How often should one be doing them? At what age should we be doing them? How old was your sister? My sister was 36. 36. Now, so everything that I hear about, uh, you know, doing your mammogram, the first mammogram, you should be 40 when you get your mammogram. Not exactly sure if that's a myth or if that's a fact or how we approach that, but speak to the importance of self breast examinations and how old you should be once you, when you start. Yes. Thank you. That's a great question. And the reason why this, uh, you know, we need to share more information about what's out there we actually know that she was lucky. She did self-examination, but you can see she still lost her battle to breast cancer, mm -hmm. right? She wasn't mm -hmm. expecting to get breast cancer at 36. And I see so many women, you know, we know better now than waiting till 40 or waiting till 50. Mm -hmm. And we're losing too many black women to young onset breast cancer because we have not done the right communications to every woman, right? right? Whether you have it in your family or you don't have it in the, your family, the fact that you have breasts means that you should know about your breast. Right. And God forbid, if you feel a lump, immediately get to the doctor. But by the time you feel a lump, sometimes it's too late, mm -hmm. right? It's already big enough for you to feel a lump. So then how do we arm ourselves right. to be able to uh, get a proper diagnosis? That's where my work on genetics has come in. That's why I'm asking every woman, go in and talk to your primary care doctor mm -hmm. and tell them, I need to know what my risk for breast cancer is. We actually started a new study, uh, a wisdom study. Wisdom basically means women informed to screen based on measures of risk, 
Mm -hmm. I, if your sister died of breast cancer at 36, you didn't have a chance to get to 40 to get that diagnosis. Exactly. So you don't want to wait till you are 40. And we have guidelines that are telling black women, oh, should you go at 40? Should you go? I mean, we, the black guidelines, we're rewriting them. And that's why I'm starting it. Uh, 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 we're starting and launching a, a large program across the country to look for a hundred thousand women. Unfortunately, that uh, program, wisdomstudy.org, is only for women 40 and older mm -hmm. when they go in and get that first mammogram. But I'm using the opportunity to also tell every woman, especially black women, that you can get breast cancer before you're 40. So yeah. how are you gonna know about it? Mm -hmm. So that we're now doing genetic testing. We've been talking about BRCA1 and BRCA2. And it wasn't until Mr. Bowles, Mr. Bowles happens to be uh, 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 a, a black man who had BRCA2 mutation, right? Mm -hmm. And because she's a, a celebrity, he went out there and he says, by the way, Mr. Bowles is Beyonce's father. And he says, I have male breast cancer mm -hmm. and I have BRCA2. But we have not had celebrities like Angelina Jolie talking to black women about the fact that you can have BRCA1 mutation, you can have BRCA2 mutation. So that's why when they told me to come and jump on this uh, call, I was like, well, here I'm going to find my celebrity because <laughs> we need to talk about it, right? Yeah, yeah. You need to let other women know. Your sister dying at 36 means you need to have genetic testing tomorrow. Right. right. And to that point, Spit, I wanted to ask, was this something that ran in your family? Is this something that's genetic? Um, you know, no. My sister was adopted at the okay. age of one. My parents adopted my little sister at the age of one, and she's been in our family for um, the whole time. But it's still important. It doesn't, for me, it doesn't matter the, gen the genetic because I had to f literally physically deal with what she dealt with and it was so so uh, um hard that and so trying mm -hmm. and um disturbing to see mm -hmm. what she had to deal with that for me i understand the genetic part but it's important to get screenings um i do get my screenings actually i i go to my i'm probably a hypochondriac because <laughs> me <too>. i <laughs> I feel that, you know, the importance of, of screenings, you know, just can help ahead of time. And, I, and it's unfortunate that my sister found out um, after the fact, you know, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but, but, you know, let that be a lesson to those, you know, out there, those women out there. Um, honestly, I know there are guidelines, but if we can get ahead of it to save our lives and save our, our, our loved ones' lives and our community's lives, um, then we should do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the, the challenge that we have, especially with the guidelines, which we're really trying to rewrite is that, you know, we, even when you feel that lump, you know, we're people of faith, right? I see some of my patients that will say, oh, you know, I, you know, I don't, I didn't want to accept that this could be breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so I waited, right? Mm -hmm. Or I, I tried something else. And so what I tell everybody is that, the fact that you're a woman and you can get breast cancer means if you feel something, just run to your doctor. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a doctor, find somebody that can refer you. Because you know, in Chicago, for example, in Illinois, we have a lot of uh, you know Susan G. Komen, American Cancer Society. There's so many women who are underinsured or who don't have insurance, yeah. right? And they're looking for help. So mm -hmm. when the help is not there, they go and then just pray. And I say, please, just pick up the phone, even call a hospital and say, I feel alone, but I don't have insurance. We'll get you in, right? And so, and yet there's so many women who are working and just like you, your sister didn't, doesn't, you know, was adopted, may not know her family history, but the genetic test is a very simple blood test. Okay. And now we're even sending it to people's home. You don't have to come to a hospital to get it done. In the age of COVID, we can, you can just do a speed test and get your results. So anyone who is listening to us 40 years and older, if you are thinking about screening, 
go to wisdomstudy.org and participate because what we're looking for are a hundred thousand women and of course we are thirty thousand and i can tell you maybe we have a thousand black women participating mm. right so that's why i'm using every place that i can get to to reach out to my sisters that yes, yes i'm getting my mammogram because i'm at the age now but we all need to own this we need to be in solidarity we need to figure out how do we get triple negative breast cancer, which is the breast cancer that's killing a lot of black women, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't grow slowly, right? Mm -hmm. By the time you are delaying, it's already doubled. And mm -hmm. that's why we have the challenge. So I know that um, my, 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 my friends who asked me to join this call, you know, they've had three women in their family wow. with breast cancer, mm -hmm. right? And they are all my, mm -hmm. my patients. And I'm just grateful that they were able to come to the University of Chicago and we took care of them. They participated in clinical trials and they're alive now because of the research that we have done. So I'm using this opportunity to say treatments are out there, but mm -hmm. the challenge that we have, which you know, it's unfortunate that you had to go through the pain of watching your young sis, you know, your young, you know, 36 year old sister yes. deal with breast cancer and die from it. And that's the story of so many families. And we want to start telling different stories mm -hmm. by really getting everyone to be empowered, to feel that they're part of the solution, not to be scared, not to be afraid, but to come out and uh, hopefully have their advocate. cancer diagnosed early. Yeah, and advocate for themselves. Now, what was that website again? Um, just so that if people missed it. Yeah, wisdomstudy.org. Okay. at wisdomstudy.org and it just asks you about you know your risk factors mm -hmm. and because we have not we don't have enough information about black women african-american women mm -hmm. we need to tell them to join but they have to be 40 and older okay. to be able to join the study and okay. what we want is we want to look at you know when you get that first mammogram at 40 they might call you and say your breast is dense what does that mean well it what does that mean yeah, what does that mean? Well, it means that even if there's cancer hiding there, we may not find it. Oh. So, so if you then take it and say, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Well, it may mean that you need to get an MRI and women, whether they have a family history on their father's side mm -hmm. or on their mother's side, we're now screening those women with MRI, which is wow. much, much, much more uh, 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 specific and sensitive. And a lot of women don't know that. Yeah. And so that's why I'm really going out to say, you have to ask more questions beyond just going in to get your mammogram. And now, yes. Okay, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I know Spin has very limited time tonight, but I wanted to know about the support side of it. Um, you said when you found out with your sister that you had to go gather all of these resources and um, as a caregiver, it wasn't necessarily easy on you. How did you go about finding out the resources and uh, where can other family and friends go to support, to best support patients or someone like your sister going through um, therapy, chemotherapy? I'm not sure if she went through chemotherapy, but yeah, she, she went through the treatments as well. Um, we, I locally um, have friends here uh, that pushed me into the direction that we needed you know, to gather information and resources. And uh, my sister was well taken care of. Uh, she, she, uh, she became friends with a young lady named Coco here in Dallas. Coco is a four time survivor, mm. four times. Um, and, and she was diagnosed literally a year before my sister and she's still living and still fighting. Mm -hmm. um, she was very instrumental. I do believe in the buddy system in a sense that maybe there is someone that you know um, that's dealing with it that can help with resources or that can help with just any encouragement. And that's what we had to do. We had to literally um, reach out to people that was in that position. And we went to everything from meetings to um, the hospital itself that my sister, uh, the oncologist that my sister was dealing with um, offered a lot of help uh, as well. So we took advantage of that. Okay. 
Okay. And um, you also have, like I said, I know your time is limited with us mm -hmm. tonight, but you also have in support of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, your executive producing a short film. It's called Philadelphia Glow. Yes. Um, tell us about that film. We do have the trailer, so we'll pull up the trailer, but tell us just a little bit about the film before we get into the trailer. The Philadelphia Glow, I, um, a good friend of mine, one of my best friends, name is Mr. Frisbee. He's the writer, producer, director, and he literally came to me at, with this concept of, of, it's like a sci-fi drama. Mm -hmm. This is a short film uh, and it's reminiscent of say the Twilight Zone, a, okay. a, a, the story of a Twilight Zone um, script. Mm -hmm. And it's about a young man who has a gift of seeing um, if someone has a form of cancer, okay. whether it's colon cancer, you know, breast cancer, mm -hmm. and, and it's via a glow. So he, okay. he, so he has this gift, but it is a, also a curse for him as well. Um, and I guess it's, it's, a, it's just a form of entertainment and, and the, the purpose of it is to let people think. If you, mm -hmm. if you had the opportunity of seeing that or, or knowing ahead of time, what would you do? Would you go get you know, screened? Would you go get you know, um, any kind of help, a mammogram or, or any form of um, um, clinical diagnosis and go literally go get checked out if you mm -hmm. knew. But, what we're doing, what I do is, is in support of that is, is just let people know that this film is, I executive produced it and it's available to, to, to anybody that wants to watch it on Amazon Prime. And it's just to help support and entertain uh, uh, research and also let people know that, you know, Go get checked out. <laughs> go get screened. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we have it queued up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer. I'm not crazy. Okay, so it does look suspenseful. Um, is it very out suspenseful. now? Yes. <laughs> Think of a, Steve, a Stephen King short. Okay, okay. So is it out now and where can we watch it? Amazon Prime is out right now, just in time for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, you know, just a reminder to everyone, enjoy the film, but remember to go get checked out. We, we don't have those superpowers, fortunate, unfortunately, we don't have the superpowers that would allow right. us to see ahead. So the purpose is for you to go and, and get yourself checked out and make sure you keep up with your screenings. Absolutely. And then lastly for you, you are um, DJing, virtually DJing an event this weekend. It is called the Pink... Uh, Pink, you know, Pink Tie, tie Affair. Affair, the 10th annual Pink Tie Affair. Tell us about that before you get out of here. Yes, the Pink Tie Affair. They called me and they were like, Spin, would you do it? And I said, oh, yes. So it's the after party going down Saturday, October 24th. Um, okay. I'm going to post information on my page and flyers and all that leading up to it so people can tune in. Hopefully you can tune in. Okay. Wonderful. Well, we don't want to keep you past your time. Thank you so very much for checking in Thank at Health you. IQ. Um, we will be tuning in for the Pink Tie Affair, the 10th annual, seeing you virtually spin and do your thing. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank and we'll you also so be tuning in to your short film as well. Yeah. Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Glow. Glow, yes. Thank okay. you so much, Marcia. Thank you. Bye, we'll talk thank you, Xavier, for, for all you do. Thank, thanks for all you do. And uh, thanks for raising awareness of uh, breast cancer. We all wish we could have the glow, but unfortunately we don't. So right. thank you. Thank, yes. you. thank you so much. Take care, guys. You too, Sven. Have a great day. So, so doctor, I want to get into um, a little more about breast cancer, right? Um, what is or what are some of the biggest misconceptions about breast cancer when it comes to our African-American community? Yeah, I think, you know, it's actually, you know, 
after, during this pandemic, we're dealing with inequality and we're dealing with the fact that for a very long time, black women and black men have not been paid attention to by mm -hmm. the health system that has failed them because of racism. Yeah. And so as a result of that, we have women and men who feel disenfranchised, mm -hmm. who don't trust the medical establishment, right? So even when you have a problem, you're not looking for somebody to help you, you because you feel that you're alone by yourself. So for a very long time, there was always this misunderstanding that black people don't come to see the doctor. Black mm -hmm. people are in denial. And what I learned from working at Cook County Hospital and now in my practice at the University of Chicago, people want to get well, people want good health, but the stressors of life, not having a job or not having health insurance sometimes prevents people from coming in. So yes, we had a myth in the medical establishment that people were in denial, that they just didn't come forward. Mm -hmm. And we've rewritten that to say, no, it's not that they were in denial, it's that they didn't even know which hospital will take them. Okay. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we, take, we take vans, we take, uh, uh, you know, to, to go to churches and tell women, go and, uh, you know, check your breast, do all of that. So mm -hmm. if you get, if you check your breast and you have a lump, and there's no doctor that will take you to take care of you. Right. So when I realize that in fact, after this pandemic, what we need to do is we need to tell people we're on your, in your, on your side. We need to mm -hmm. figure out how we can all be in solidarity. Yes, triple negative breast cancer can grow very fast, mm -hmm. but it also it's the most curable. Her two positive breast cancer can grow very fast but it's also the most curable. The big difference is you have to come in early. Early. We have okay. to start that treatment early. Mm -hmm. We may have to use chemotherapy. And okay, if we use chemotherapy, you may lose your hair, but you're going to grow it back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so a lot of things that keep people away, keep them suspicious of the doctors. You know, I cut my hair because one of my patients said, oh, you know, if you cut your hair, that would be so nice. And I was like, okay, Wakanda forever. Wakanda right? forever, right. I'm, we are in right? this together, right. right. We are in this together. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. to me, there's so many ways that women can be beautiful and they can survive breast cancer. But so, they, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so part of the myth is that, you know, you're not going to survive. Don't take chemotherapy, don't get surgery. But those are all myths that, we have debunked now and you need mm -hmm. to come in and if you get treated early you're going to survive okay so i definitely want to get into the myth aspect of breast cancer because uh we pulled to get we pulled some people we pulled together some of the most common myths and i want you to debunk them for us but before we get into that explain to us exactly what triple negative breast cancer is well so for a very long time, we thought breast cancer is one disease. You know, mm -hmm. you get a type of breast cancer. But it was actually research that we were doing, especially after we found out that women can be born with a BRCA1 or a BRCA2 mutation. BRCA1 and 2. B BRCA1, BRCA1 or BRCA2. It is genetic. Okay. okay. And if you inherit the genetic form of breast cancer, you tend to get it very young, and then you tend to get triple negative breast cancer. And so what that means is that it's estrogen receptor negative. It's not driven by estrogen. Okay. Okay. We for decades thought that every breast cancer was driven by estrogen. Mm -hmm. And so we test for estrogen receptor on the surface of the breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So if it is positive, we say it's estrogen receptor positive. Mm -hmm. because we can get medication, which is a pill to treat estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. Okay. And then we discovered HER2. HER2 is another gene that makes breast cancer cells grow very fast. However, in the 90s, we developed drugs that would target 
this particular gene, this particular genetic abnormality. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that the most lethal type of breast cancer is now the most treatable. The wow. reason why we said they were aggressive was because when we didn't have good medication, women would die within two years because they were just aggressive and they were nasty. Mm -hmm. But now if you come in early and we have to use chemotherapy or we have to use uh, a targeted therapy, we check for those three things, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2. And if they're all negative, then we say it's triple negative. Okay. 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 And that triple negative means that the only thing you're going to need to get is chemotherapy mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have any targeted therapy. And so sometimes when, and because this happens to be very common for black women, when they hear you have, you need chemotherapy, some of them run away yes. and it's too late. Yes. So, so tell us, uh, so chemotherapy is, is, obviously one of the most common treatments for breast cancer, but what are some other treatments that women can look into um, when it comes to a, a positive breast cancer diagnosis? Yeah, so that's why now we're talking about immunotherapy and we're also talking about targeted therapy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for some of our patients who are able to get in and come and get, I mean, I can tell you, uh, one of my favorite patients ever uh, had metastatic breast cancer. The cancer was all over her body. Mm. And this was in the uh, uh, almost 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she came in, she happened to have a HER2 positive breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And she got antibody, right? And a pill uh, that combined together just eradicated every single one of those cancer cells. She's alive now taking pills that has suppressed that cancer. And it's 15 years after she came in with advanced metastatic breast cancer. So, so she's cancer free now. She is cancer free now. Wow. And she's just taking medications to keep it in check. So mm -hmm. you can take hormonal therapy and you can take Herceptin and there are many different uh, medications now. I don't want to necessarily talk about every one of them. Even mm -hmm. for triple negative breast cancer, we have a group of drugs called PAP inhibitors that are working miracles and they're in clinical trials now. So our goal is really to get as many women, if they're dealing with advanced breast cancer, if they're dealing with metastatic breast cancer, to go in and talk to their doctor about, is there a test I can take that mm -hmm. will make my uh, will make me have access to the right drug at the right time okay. for my type of breast cancer. Yes, yes, yes. So it's all about advocating for yourself, asking those questions and continuing to press and ask questions. Um, before we get into dispelling the myths of uh, breast cancer, we just want to know what is the most important thing that women should know about breast cancer? Is it one? But if not, what are those important things that women must need to know about breast cancer? Yeah, so as I've said over and over again, uh, breast cancer doesn't just wake up one night and then say, I'm coming to affect this person, right? It's a mm -hmm. whole lifelong journey. And that's why knowing the risk factors for breast cancer is really key. And what we know is that of all the things that we eat or do, alcohol, when you consume a lot of alcohol, and then as you get older, you're more likely to get breast cancer. So that's why I'm talking to every woman at 30, right? 30, you may already have children or maybe you don't have children. Talk mm -hmm. to your primary care doctor about risk factors. We know for, for example, that women who have children and have lots of children and breastfeed lower their risk for breast cancer. Okay. Well, not everybody these days has the opportunity to have lots of children and breastfeed. Right. But if you have those risk factors, well, maybe what you need to do is try to think about other lifestyle things that you can do mm -hmm. to lower your risk. So I tell every woman, eat in moderation, don't gain excessive weight, 
Um, if you gain excessive weight, well, see your doctor, make sure that your diabetes, your high blood pressure, that they're all controlled. Because God forbid, if you have to be treated for breast cancer, your chances of surviving will be better if you don't have all those other complications that are not taken care of. And this is what COVID has taught us, right? They were going out and saying, oh, people are dying because they have diabetes, they have high blood pressure, they were obese. Well, they were obese and probably not fit to begin mm -hmm. with. And then you have this horrible disease. Right. And so black and brown people died more. And so what we're saying after this COVID, we all need to get going on exercising, keeping our bodies mm -hmm. moving, mm -hmm. keeping our metabolism going so that if you are going to get breast cancer, you will come in fit, right? You will come in able to tolerate the, the treatments because what we also found was that black women are more likely to quit, right? Mm -hmm. Because they can't tolerate the side effects and their yeah. doctors are more likely to cut the dose of their, of their treatment because they are not tolerating it. Yeah. So there's some myths that are because of what we believe and there's some that are just because of the way we've lived our lives. Yeah. Now I will say this. I have not heard um, the myth or and or fact that uh, women who consume large amounts of alcohol are more prone to breast cancer than those who don't. I've, I haven't I've never heard that. Oh, well, so I, I know that's one of the things that actually, if you look at all, you know, the things that women started doing once we became liberated and we can have you know, our lives, uh, the way we like it is mm -hmm. we stop really having lots of children. We start having professions. And if you look at the number one risk factor that really increases women's risk is how much alcohol you consume over your lifetime. Wow. Right? And that, wow is all I can say, because that, that brings us to our first myth that uh, we wanted to debunk. And um, well, I'm not sure if it's a myth or a fact, I'm going to ask you. And, and it says, basically, if you maintain a healthy weight, exercise regularly, eat healthy and limit alcohol, you don't have to worry about breast cancer. Myth or fact? Uh, it's a myth, right? Because all you're doing is lowering your risk, mm -hmm. right? You are never going to eliminate your risk as long as you are alive, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of those things are good, healthy lifestyle, right? That's why I love health IQ, right? We all want to be amazingly, you know, uh, fabulous, but some of us are going to be chubbier. We're going to be heavier than most people. Right. That doesn't mean we still can't get up and do 30 minutes of um, walking every day or three days a week. And if we like to drink, well, maybe instead of having Four martinis a night, maybe just keep it to one, right? <laughs> Don't do four. <laughs> <laughs> right? right. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, we need to figure out a more better ways to distress because the other thing that we found also is that, you know, I'm smoking. You know, I see a lot of black women picking up smoking wow. as a way to, to keep their weight down. And wow. lung cancer now kills more black women than breast cancer, wow. right? Wow. Because wow. we're smoking, we're yeah. drinking. And so I'm saying, look, it's okay. You know, I don't want, you know, I don't want you to live in a world where you're not going to have fun and party, but everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. And bottom line, just take care of yourself. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Establish healthy habits. And you're not the four martinis a day when you yeah. really could just have one a week. So, so let's get into we can have two a week, but you know, don't party every night, get drunk every night, and then you know, not take care of yourself. Wow, yes, all of that. Okay, so our next myth is if I don't have, um, if I don't have a family history of breast cancer, I won't get it. Myth or fact? Oh, it's that's a myth, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. in fact, one of the things that happens is if it's genetic, it can come from your father's side. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're finding that some people will report that, oh, my father had prostate cancer, but they never even imagined that prostate cancer can be part of uh, uh, hereditary breast cancer. No. And, and so the first myth is people thinking you can only get it from your mother's side. Right. Mm -hmm. You can get breast cancer from both sides of your family. Wow. That's why when we're seeing patients, we ask people talk about your grandmother. Right. Look at all the women in your family. If you 
lucky and you've had a lot of women and they haven't had any cancer, well, maybe there's no genetic uh, risk. But how about on your dad's side? If they're mm. not enough, a lot of women, if you don't know why people uh, uh, um, you know, have died, uh, especially when people have died young, I'm telling every woman, just go and get a genetic test, 23 and me, and uh, these tests are now really very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And so just find out a little bit more about yourself. Okay, okay, wonderful, we will do that. Okay, mm -hmm. so this one threw me for a loop because I had never heard of this one either. Uh, myth or fact, wearing a bra can cause breast cancer. Of course not. <laughs> that's that's a myth. Uh, wearing a bra, putting money in your bra. Even people have talked about wearing a deodorant. Uh -huh. uh, all of these things. Those are all. I mean, if you go on the internet to look for uh, risk factors for breast cancer, you're going to see all sorts of things. Yeah. None of them, at least not based on what we have studied, are associated with breast cancer risk. Yeah. So you just spelled the next one too. Wearing deodorant can cause breast cancer. Um, not a, it's not a fact. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one. Carrying. What about carrying your cell phone in your bra? You see a lot of ladies doing this. Yeah. You know, with their cell phone. What about that? Yeah. So they, they there's so much that we don't know, mm -hmm. and uh, and the thing that we do know is that breast cancer rates are increasing, mm -hmm. right? And so when we see that the breast cancer rates are increasing, the question is, what are women doing now that they weren't doing before, right? right? Mm -hmm. So women in, in, 19, you know, in the 1920s, they were not at work, they were having babies and they were just not stressed out, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, you know, I always use my mother as an example. She had three, four, you know, six children. Wow. And breast, all of, fed all of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's living, she's in her, you know, hundredth year of life. And I'm Congratulations thinking, to yeah. you and her, yes. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, my goodness, am I gonna make it even beyond? You know? <laughs> because my lifestyle is so different from hers now. Yeah. right mm -hmm. but that's also something to celebrate right mm -hmm. we have advances women are in the workforce women are able to choose how they live their lives and i think that's why it's important to join research so we can learn more about what a modern woman needs yeah. right i yeah. we can legislate if you ask me to have six children there was no way i would have six children so that's mm -hmm. not a good way to talk about preventing breast cancer. Right. However, we're living modern lives. I don't know that putting, uh, uh, you know, cell phones in your bra makes any sense, but I, I know I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But, right. So uh -huh. now I'm, I'm very cautious. Well, get a handbag, you know, use, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, take care of yourself and, yeah. that, and be, and be mindful of the things that you're doing. But when people have looked at, uh, you know, whether cell phones or, or radiation or some things cause cancer, mm -hmm. uh, they've done studies, especially for brain tumors, right? Because you put phones to your, to your brain and people were thinking maybe that causes brain tumors. Yeah. That study did not show that that really led to brain cancer. So uh, I don't think that that's, that's true. Okay, so we talked about alcohol earlier um, leading to um, um, a higher chance of, of breast cancer. What about consuming too much sugar? Um, does that cause breast cancer? Does that lead to breast cancer? Uh -huh. So the, the idea around our metabolism and sugar is really very important, right? Mm -hmm. Because what happens when you are, um, uh, you know, when you think about um, uh, 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 how women consume uh, uh, sugar, it's mm -hmm. because they, um, you know, take a lot of sugary drinks, right? And I call those things empty calories, right? Mm -hmm. So why consume empty calories that just gives you excess weight when you can eat healthy? So the idea around metabolism, around sugar, around everything is that we tend to eat too much and then we tend to also um, uh, also um, just not take care of ourselves. So that's mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. the, the sugar comes in. I would say everything in moderation. Okay. okay. Um, um, last myth, uh, early stage breast cancer rarely recurs. 
Yeah, so it depends on what type of breast cancer. And this is why it's really uh, very important to have a good team that is working with you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, sometimes when you catch the cancer early, you can treat it effectively. And m you have a much, much better chance that it will never come back. However, if you wait and you leave it uh, until it's advanced, then it, it just really uh, uh, increases the chance that it will come back. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, a, it's the odds. The odds that it will come back is much lower okay. when it's early stage, but it can still come back. And that's why sometimes, even when it's early stage, doctors will say, but you need chemotherapy, but you need this, you need radiation, because we really want to make sure that it never has a chance to come back. Understand. And uh, we just got two more myths coming in, and then we want to talk about the effects of uh breast cancer with COVID in the COVID era, but let's go ahead and move to these because we don't have a lot of time. Um, one last, well, second, second to last myth, breast cancer always causes a lump that you can feel, myth or fact? Uh, it's a myth because sometimes there's no lump, right? Mm -hmm. There's a type of breast cancer called inflammatory breast cancer that you just wake up and your breast is all red and you can't feel a lump. Right. Mm. Uh, the other thing also is that there's some breast cancers, lobular breast cancer, that may not form, uh, come in form of a uh, of a lump. You may just see that there's uh, some changes in your nipple. We call it nipple retraction. So that's why, as part of the breast exam, we ask you to look at your breast. Right? Mm -hmm. Does it look the way it's always looked? Mm -hmm. Is the nipple now tilted towards one side when it wasn't mm -hmm. always like that? Mm -hmm. So it's not always a lump that you have to feel. It's just that there are changes. So the breast exam, looking at yourself in the mirror is all we ask you to do. Just know what your breast looks like. That is good breast health. And if you now see that, oh, is there something changing here? Mm -hmm. Then bring it to the attention of your doctor. But yes, there are some breast cancers that do not form lumps. Okay. And oh. last myth, um, annual mammograms guarantee that breast cancer will be found early. Uh, that's also a myth. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're talking about beyond mammography. When you get that mammogram, make sure you read what it says, right? 30% uh, of women who come in with breast cancer, even at the time that we finally diagnosed their breast cancer was not caught by a mammogram. And mm. that's why we're doing the wisdom study. That's mm -hmm. why we're asking women to do their risk assessment because there's some breast cancers that you just won't pick up with a mammogram. Yeah. And that's why beyond mammography means know your risk, know whether you need a mammogram, when you need a mammogram, and then whether you need more than a mammogram because you may mm -hmm. need an MRI, you may need an ultrasound, but you have to talk to your doctor whether you need more than yeah. just the mammogram. Well, last question of the night. Thank you so much for sharing and debunking all of those myths so that our audience can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Dr. Olapade, dropping jewels, dropping gems, definitely informing us about the importance of breast cancer awareness this October. But last question, uh, we're still in a global pandemic. COVID is still running rampant. And we just want to know, how has COVID affected the diagnosis and treatment of uh, triple negative breast cancer? Oh, it's been horrible. It's been horrible. And that's why, you know, I'm in my office now and we are saying to everybody, we're back in business mm -hmm. uh, because the, the de delay, we found that, you know, our hospital was covered with you know, 90% of the patients that we were seeing in, in March, April, May were patients with COVID and we, we couldn't see a lot of our cancer patients. Thank God we have everything we need to mm -hmm. take care of our patients. Mm -hmm. And we're now seeing women who delayed coming in wow. and now the cancer has doubled or is more advanced. Wow. Wow. And, you know, I tell everybody, Cancer doesn't wait for COVID, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid. You need to, if you need to come in, we're here. We have PPE, we're washing our hands. The hospital is clean. 
don't delay. But we certainly didn't have a choice because we didn't want to expose our patients and we didn't want our patients to get COVID. Plus, even if we needed to see patients, the whole hospital was covered. So that's why I'm appealing to everybody, mm -hmm. wear a mask. Wear a wash mask. Your hands. Yes. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and keep your social distance. We all need to survive this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And don't be part of that statistics that yeah. you know, black and brown are dying from COVID. Yeah. You can put this in your own hands mm -hmm. by wearing a mask, washing your hands, and keeping your social distance. So yes, we want people to come into the hospital. We want them to come and get treated and get diagnosed because delay can be deadly. Yes. Well, we definitely appreciate you coming on the Health IQ this week and informing our audience of all of the things that you have done today. Uh, Dr. Olapade, medical oncologist and founder of the Clinical Cancer Genetics Program at the University of Chicago Medicine. Please give us that one website one more time and let us know where we can find more resources as well. Yes, so it's Wisdom Study. So Wisdom, women informed to screen based on measures of risk. So wisdom, it's like wisdom. And yeah. then wisdom study, one word, right? Dot org, right? Okay. And you okay. go in there, it will ask you how, uh, you know, if you uh, have you, you know, are you 40? You have to be okay. 40 to participate. Right. And right. then it will ask you your risk factors. And then you can choose how you want to be screened, whether you want the personalized arm or if you want to uh, the, the trial to choose for you. But it's really important that we all sign up and be part of that study. Well, we thank you very much for your time and your passion and dedication to making sure that our community is well informed. We appreciate you and we'll see you next time on Health IQ. All right. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. Bye bye. Yeah.